MIT, who will be talking to us about from biomodules to simple modules in many small steps. Okay, so thank you uh, for uh, inviting me. And uh, I, I should say that uh, uh, I, uh, I will talk about some, some older stuff, but it's not, it's not my choice, but Jordi asked me to talk about that. So, so, uh, so, it, so it will be uh, <clears throat> uh, basically about some uh, re reformulation, of a conjecture modular representation, which I which I had about forty years ago. Uh, so, uh, so, so I think let me start so to introduce some notation. Uh, so, uh, so, so G is simply connected, semi-simple uh, over F P bar, and P is uh, very large. And there's a fixed toru, maximal toru, fixed borel, and the lattice of weights. And you have a notation for the simple roots, alpha i. <clears throat> and then we interested in representations of G, which are rational representations, finite dimensional, they form a category. And its simple objects have been known since Chevalet. Uh, and they are indexed uh, as in classic zero. They index in the same way, the index by dominant weights. <clears throat> and the simple model is called L lambda. And it is characterized by having a, a B-stable line on which T acts by, uh, by lambda. And then the dominant uh, uh, weights are defined uh, as, as, as written here. <clears throat> uh, and then L lambda for the base of the growth and the group which may be identified in a standard way with uh, group ring of X invariant by W, by, by group. <clears throat> and there's another basis which are, which is, which are, uh, which is not a E0 lambda indexed by the same set, same set. They are, they are, uh, come from by modules with, and these are, these come from uh, representation classic zero, which are irreducible by reduction modulo P. <clears throat> Okay, so now, <clears throat> uh, so the uh, problem was to, <clears throat> this L lambda are very complicated uh, so things, and so easy lambda are, are, are well, well understood, but L lambda are not, not so well understood, and want to understand how they, <clears throat> how L lambda is expressed in terms of E0 lambda. <clears throat> and, and actually, just an example of, uh, Oh, oh, by the way, did you, did, you, uh, did, did you see this? Yeah, so oh, maybe we didn't see the last yeah, line. We, yeah, we did. Uh, we can see up to let x plus red. Huh? So, anyway, so, 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 okay, so now, <clears throat> okay, so here's some uh, picture of how. In SL3, the bar modules, uh, they're indexed by, by points in, the, in, this, uh, in this cone, the inter integer points, and uh, they have dimension like this. Uh, <clears throat> and you, you, can, you can see these bar modules. And then there's an idea of, uh, of Verma, is that if you have a prime number, you can look at all the bar modules which have, well, suppose, uh, so our prime number is uh, pretty large. Look, uh, look at all values with dimension divisible by P. And then you, you will get all these hyperplanes that, that are pictured here, uh, that has P equals three. So, so and, and then, th then there is a, alpha, they generate some, you can view the as B mirrors from alpha and bar group. And this play a role in the character formula. So this was the idea of Verma 1975. <clears throat> Uh, now, uh, now there are some particular elements in uh, in this uh, dominant weights which are called restricted. Uh, in in this picture, they are uh, the things in in, in this uh, in this box. So, including the uh, this upper boundary and the right boundary. So they are uh, 
So they're all dominant weights, so that uh, if I apply a simple root, you get something between zero and p minus one. Okay, so that is. So now another uh, another example is. Uh, so so here are the so in case of SL two. Uh, for any restricted dominant weight, L lambda is the same as E zero lambda. Uh, but but if you go to so other groups, then it is not not so. For example, in SL three, you have the restricted for p equals five. The, these uh, restricted weights are, are, are as in this picture. Uh, but the simple modules they look like this. So this this picture was uh, uh, discovered by by uh, Braden. So it's not not uh, not the Braden who is in this room in this uh, institute, but a different Braden, <coughs> student of Curtis, and he uh, he found that well he he he, he found uh, something uh, uh, that that uh, if you are uh, under this line which is considered by Berman for so Berman contains later, but if you are under this line. Then things are irreducible. L, L lambda equals E zero lambda, but if you are in this other alcohol, uh, then each uh, the, the dimension of the L lambda is a difference of the dimension of this file module and and its mirror image in 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 this mirror. So so that 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 was a actually quite quite a interesting uh, result. Nineteen sixty seven. <clears throat> Okay, now, um, now the re reason that this uh, restricted ways uh, are, 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 are relevant is that uh, you can reduce the study of L lambda for any dominant weight in case of restricted weights because of the Steinberg tensor product theorem. So if you write a dominant weight, you can write it uniquely in a, in a periodic expansion. Like this with coefficient well, lambda k being re restricted, then L lambda will be a tensor product of uh, L lambda zero and some twisted forms of L lambda one, twisted forms of L lambda two, etc. So, uh, which means that in principle you can this is known if if, if L lambda is known for restricted, it's known for any any other one. And well, these terms is attributed to Steinberg, but in fact it was. Known before him for uh, many, many special cases, in fact, uh, uh, all all done by Brouwer and his students. Steinberg was also one of his students. So for SL two and SL three, SLM was known before. Okay. So now we have this. Uh, uh, let's see, problem. So problem is, uh, yeah, well, oh yes, I think I forgot on this page. Uh, you can write, uh, you can write L lambda as a linear combination of E zero mu with integer coefficients. And then the uh, problem is to determine these coefficients. And now uh, conjecture formula for this, which involves polynomials. In my paper with Karl Dan, seventy-nine, uh, for certain pairs of elements, the affine bar group is, is the affine bar group which defined by Berma, as I mentioned. So there is such a such a conjecture formula, uh, and is valid not for all lambda, but only for lambda in some set, which I call S. It has approximately p to the uh, twice the rank times time divided by some constant. Elements, and this so this was proposed in 1980. And, and this uh, this set S contains the restricted weights, and then from this you can deduce uh, uh, the general case using the tensor product theorem. And then, but then uh, then then in about ten years later, I I I I had found some slightly reformulated this formula. 
so so I defined uh, so so far we have two bases of, of this of the z, z of x w, but now there's a third basis, which I call e one lambda. Indexed by the same things, and so this is something I introduced is that so there are reductions mod p of simple modules of quantum groups at p to the unity. Uh, so, the, uh, so, and, and um, so I do this basis, and then I I, st I also say to the conjecture formula for the character of for, for, for what this E1 lambda is in terms of E0 lambda. Uh, and it is well, again in terms of the same polynomials, but except that here it is, it is valid for all lambda, not only for lambda in this, uh, in this set S. <clears throat> and then, then the conjecture that is conjecture E1 lambda equals L lambda if lambda is in S. So that was the re reformulation, but it, it played the role in the proof. Uh, so, because the conjecture was eventually proved in 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 uh, by a combination of three papers, one Anderson, Janssen, Sergel, and Kardan and me, and Kashivara Tanizaki, and the step the the, the uh, three steps which were predicted in, in two of my papers, <clears throat> uh, and. And, and, and now I so I, I, I uh, so I said a one lambda can be expressed in terms of some exp has explicit explicit formula which 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 which, which, which expresses this in terms of, of, of that and the coefficients I, I will involve these polynomials I mentioned but I will not write it precisely I, I will just write this p of mu lambda so integer and explicitly known. <clears throat> so, uh, okay, so that was the situation. Now, uh, now I should say that I, I didn't, I, I, uh, something which I didn't quite like about this is that you have to, well, for, for L, L lambda, you, you have to use this combination of, of, uh, of methods. So, so I, uh, um, so I, in fact, I, I some, so I, I tried to, uh, I tried to do the following thing. Um, so this e, so we have this. You start e zero lambda, e one lambda. So these are bile modules. These are things of quantum group. And uh, so what I, I claim is that this, uh, this, these two things are just beginning of a sequence. Uh, so it can be continued forever, uh, and, and this is something which is in the paper general 2015. So, so it's actually um, and the definition of this. So, so idea is that uh, this e2 lambda is expressed in terms of e1 lambda in almost the same way as e1 lambda in terms of e0 lambda, and then each 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 term. Is expressed in terms of previews by by similar formulas, so, so all, almost always the same formula, but you have to change scale. So so more precisely, e two lambda has this this definition. You you uh, you, you sum over uh, you sum over all mu in x plus, but only those mu such that uh, mu the periodic expansion of mu starts with the same way as lambda starts at lambda zero. So you only take those mu, and then for for those mu you can you can divide mu minus lambda zero by p, and you can divide lambda minus lambda zero by p, and then you then you have this coefficient that that we know from the from the previous uh, page. And, and, and you take, then, you, then you take this combination, so, so that, that is e to lambda. Uh, and, and then you can, then you can, uh, then you can do something, you can define e3 lambda in a similar way. You take a sum over all mu in x plus, but only those mu such that 
they coincide with lambda in, in the first two uh, for, for first two uh, uh, so terms of a periodic expansion. So, so mu minus this, this difference is divisible by p squared. And then for such, for such mu, you can uh, divide this difference by p squared and you get another dominant rate. And then you can subtract lambda minus the difference all that, that by this p squared get another dominant rate. And then this p of these two things are defined. And so, so you can consider the sum. <coughs> So, so, so this obviously can be uh, uh, continued forever. Mm, and then, uh, okay, so now, now, now I want to state what properties this, uh, this e, uh, e k lambda uh, has. So, so, that, mm, mm. So, <clears throat> so, so one property is that they always form, uh, so for any, any k, this ek lambda form a z basis of, of this of this uh, of this thing that that, that is more or less obvious and, and of course the beginning is while module and then so the first two terms are, are as, as i said before now there's a less obvious uh, statement is that each ek lambda uh, of course it said that it is by definition, it is, it is a virtual representation of G, but it's, actu it's, it's an actual representation, you can prove. So, so, this, so this can be viewed as a sequence of representation. And then the, the, the most important thing is that uh, this EK lambda, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah they, so, so they, they stabilize. So for, la for any lambda, uh, this this thing become equality for large k, and uh, <clears throat> and, and and then so so so, so you can define e lambda infinity that has a meaning, and the claim is that, that that equals l lambda. So 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 it means that uh, so that's what I meant in the title by the fact that you go from val module to simple module by many simple steps because here it, here l lambda appears as a uh, re result of, of well as as as, uh, as as part of as as a limit of of, of this uh, sequence so so the many small steps in the sequence in the limit you get a lambda and and, uh, and and then then but what is uh, so one 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 uh, re remark is that uh, you don't have to use Steinberg tensor product term anymore. Uh, so in, in this definition, you 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 don't have to use Steinberg tensor product term. Uh, of course, it is used in the proof, but that's a different issue. So, but in the statement, you don't don't have to use it. Uh, okay. Uh, so then it's also true that if if you take uh, k some some two numbers k prime and Less less than equal to k, then this e, e lambda k prime is a positive combination of e k mu. So that's a, that's that's a, that's a stronger statement than saying that they are all uh, actual representations or actual modules, because then you get um, uh, and, and in fact this this is not difficult. All, all these things are not difficult to prove. And then I will say the transition matrix from e, e lambda k plus one to e lambda k is, a, is always a, is independent of k up to rescaling. Okay. Okay. Now some uh, some remark is that. Uh, so I always assume that uh, P is large, but in fact, definition makes sense for, for any P. Uh, and uh, infinity is, is defined for any P, but is not necessarily, infinity lambda is not necessarily equal to L lambda. 
but then then you can then you can say that uh, you can you can you can call infinite lambda it's a new new value module because it's it's a it's something which can be regarded as understood and then 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 you are uh, the, the problem is to express uh, l l lambda in terms of e lambda so l lambda is equal to e infinity lambda if p if a large prime and it's not necessarily equal it's very complicated for for small prime but but uh, but now all, all the all the representation this model representation theory is reduced to to comparing those two for 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 uh, for us uh, finitely many times. <clears throat> so now I want to I want to uh, give some example in SL2 uh, which will be uh, well to see how this sequence E uh, K lambda looks like in SL2. <clears throat> So suppose you take uh, G is SL2 and P equals three. Uh, and um, so, so the vine modules in this case, the total, uh, well, they, they form a sequence uh, and you can, spec you can specify them by say saying what is the dimension. So, so all the numbers, one, two, three, et cetera. And then there are these mirrors. So, so I assume P equals three. So then there are mirrors, which is uh, all the all this thing divided by three. So mirror three and six and nine and so on. And then, um, uh, well, then then this. If you want to now, the next thing you want to understand what is dimension of E one lambda. So these are things coming from quantum group. Uh, and so what happens is that, uh, for example, here, so so one and two and three remain unchanged. Yes, they don't change. They they are the same for e for zero lambda as for e one lambda. But for four becomes four minus two because you reflect four in this mirror and then you subtract uh, four four minus this mirror image. So it's four minus two, and, and this this becomes the the. Uh, the E1, E1 lambda, the difference of those things. And then five, so this five is also uh, reflected uh, and you have to subtract in your image, which is one. And then, uh, and then six, you don't do any, this six, you don't do anything. And then for seven, you, uh, you you again take mirror image, but there are two mirrors. So first in first in this mirror, and then in the other mirror. So then they take alternating sum seven minus five plus one. And for eight, you take again you reflect in this this mirror and in this first in this mirror, then you get four, and then in this mirror you get two. And they take alternating sum, <clears throat> and then nine is unchanged, and then then you this this goes on forever. So for each. Each of these mirrors, nothing is changed, and for everything outside the mirror, you just keep reflecting in, in previous mirrors and take alternating sum, and 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 then you get the the dimensions for the uh, for, for for you get the, at least a list of dimensions for this e1 lambda. Okay, so actually, so actually that that's when I when I found this uh, this pattern, I. No, actually, this this was the thing how I found because then I, I noticed that when you do this, you can divide this in groups of three, and again every third group has every every uh, entry divisible by three. Uh, you see, so there are this number. So from this this list, you can, you can write them in, a, in like this, and then 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 you you see that every, that if you divide them in group of three, then you have Everything divisible by three. Here, everything divisible by three, etc. So, so then you can uh, you can uh, think that this this should should now play a role of, of some new new mirrors. Uh, and um, uh, so, actually, the situation looks very similar to what we have here, but except that instead of single 
numbers, you have uh, groups of three. But, but, you can, you can, but still, you can repeat exactly the same procedure. <clears throat> and for example, um, so if you, if you assume that the same procedure remains true, then, then these first two groups, so, so you want to define now E2, E2 of lambda. So the first two groups remain unchanged, then, then this mirror remains unchanged. But then this, uh, uh, this 4, 8, 12, we have, to, we have to take this reflected uh, group of three, which is 2, 4, 6, and you subtract from it 4, 8, 2, 4, 8, 12, and subtract 2, 4, 6. And then, you, and, and then similarly from 5, 10, 15, you, you, you reflect this one in this mirror, then you get uh, this group, and then you subtract 1, 2, 3. <clears throat> and then, then this, uh, this, this group uh, where uh, everything div divisible by three, and then don't do anything. And then uh, next time you, you, you again do some iterating sum, but it's exactly the same procedure. <clears throat> and, and, and then you find a, a, a sequence which looks like this. And then you, you, you again see that if you divide in group, into groups of nine, uh, then um, uh, then every third group will be that every entry divisible by three. And, and so so that this this procedure can be can be repeated, and, and then you observe that if, if you do this thing, you you you, you will find uh, you will find a better and better approximation to L lambda. For example, in the first uh, when you have this E1 lambda, uh, then uh, this, this uh, E1 lambda is actually is equal to L lambda up to in, uh, in its first first nine uh, for its first nine elements. Uh, and uh, if if you do E2 lambda, you see that this thing equals. Uh, L lambda for the first uh, 27 elements. So, so, you, so actually, if you if you perform this thing, you see that you get closer and closer to, to L lambda. So, so, so that that's how. Uh, so that, that that's that's what suggests this uh, definition that I gave. <clears throat> and, and by the way, in in uh, uh, this business also applies in in in, in the for higher higher dimensions, so, so uh, some similar thing applies, so, so uh, and given by formula, which I showed you. <clears throat> okay, so now I think maybe the remainder of, 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 of this talk will be about some, uh, some speculation, this thing which I, I cannot prove, but, but I, I, uh, I hope that they are, proved, they are true, so, so that's... Uh, <clears throat> so one one uh, thing that I, I, I hope or, or what, what, what I believe is that uh, uh, so, so so we know that is is e zero lambda e one lambda all they both come from classic zero by reduction modulo p so so I I believe that all all the others come from classic zero as well <clears throat> uh, and. And moreover, I, I uh, so so also for E zero lambda, they are they are uh, of course they are simple object for some category or or finite. You can view them a simple object of category five dimensional adaptations of a group of uh, complex numbers. And E one lambda are simple objects for uh, for this quantum group and field of unity. And then what I, I believe is that each EK of lambda can be viewed as simple object in some category, which involves a classic zero, or only classic zero. <clears throat> uh, and, and George, so, which slide are you on? We can we're still looking at the mirrors. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't. Oh, okay. Yet. Okay. I'm not. I'm just talking. I, I will. I will. I will uh, show something. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so 
Uh, okay, so, so, so I saw, I, this, this is something I believe, but, but then I, I was thinking that uh, maybe this notion of quantum group should be, there should be something more general than quantum group. It should, should, uh, but it doesn't seem to work. You, you can, this, this E2 lambda, it has something to do with quantum group at the P square root of unity, but not, not quite, it's not, uh, no, not, 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 not quite correct. So that, that's not correct. Uh, so then I, uh, then I tried something else. Uh, so in, in this, um, so for E1 lambda, you can also interpret this in terms of uh, uh, affine Lie algebra. Uh, so th th that was part of the uh, first proof of this, of this conjecture, that, that one of the steps that you, you go from quantum group to affine Lie algebra. At, at the negative at some level minus p minus Coxeter number. Uh, so so uh, what I uh, what I now believe is that uh, there is uh, some some uh, some uh, definition involving something like affine affine Lie algebra. So there is some higher level of affine Lie algebra. <clears throat> okay, so maybe uh, so so I I I, I so I can. I can give some definition. I, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's correct, but but uh, something like this should be correct. So I <clears throat> let's see. So I put something. <clears throat> uh, so I, actually, the main main idea is to consider uh, what's called iterated affine algebra. So I, I will I will give a definition now. So. What I mean. <clears throat> uh, okay, so here I said expect e k lambda. I said make sense class is zero. Assume g simply less. That is because the otherwise you need some some non-integer central charge which I don't want now. <clears throat> so then we, we have a uh, we have a sequence of determinants epsilon one epsilon two etc. And then we define a, a sequence, first a sequence of Lie algebras over complex numbers. When each one is obtained from the previous one by tensoring by, by Laurent polynomials, but uh, over, over the, over, very, over, over the, this, this variable and this variable, etc. <clears throat> uh, but th then, then you also want to define some, uh, Central extension of these, these things. Uh, so, so we define a, a bilinear pairing on the kate of such algebra by induction. So, if you have two elements x x prime, so you want you want to define uh, some element in this uh, G k. They they will be uh, some. Obtained by something gk minus one times some power of epsilon k, basically. Oh, hi. Uh, sorry, George. Yes. And um, so uh, let me double check. You have a g one is the uh, Laurent series ten tensor with g zero, but uh, is it g two the the Laurent series tensor with g one or g two? No, no, g one. Yeah, g one. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Yeah, so G0 is the, is the, is the algebra of a complex number, just standard the algebra, and then G1 is a, it's some loop the algebra, and G2 is a double loop the algebra, and so on. Okay, so then, then um, some element of GK will be, uh, will be, well, you can write as something, power of epsilon K times something in GK minus one, and then the near product of two such things, it's, is defined uh, in terms of inner product, uh, previous inner product, which you already know, and there's some delta function in the front. <clears throat> and, to, and to begin with, with this, the, on the, for k equals zero, it is basically the killing form. Okay, so now we define, uh, we want to define central extensions. So we, so we take, so as a vector space, G, G0 tilde, so, so it will be a sequence of uh, vector spaces, one containing the other. So in the beginning, you don't do anything, but then for G1, you add uh, just one dimensional space. For G2, you add two dimensional space, two, two, two elements and so on. 
and then the then the algebra structure you, you emit so for k equal one it is that's, that's the standard definition was found by uh, physicists a long time ago I think actually before, before so they are called cuts mood but they're not they're not cuts they're, they are uh, this was defined by physicists before cuts and Moody. Um, so GK, yeah, so GK till, yes, for, so uh, G, so for, for uh, K equal zero, this, this, already, this already a Lie algebra. And for K get at least one, the bracket is given by uh, formula. So, so again, the bracket of this element, this element is, is expressed in terms of similar bracket for, for k minus one. So, uh, and then you have to add some multiple of ck. So at, at this previous step, you will get, you will get some combination of all you get c1, c2, ck minus one, they will appear. And then this last, this last is also, also at ck. And here you use this bilinear form, which we have before. <clears throat> So, so these are so that's a, so these are the, so these are sequence of uh, of Lie algebras. Okay, now, now I want to introduce some category of, of uh, modules over this uh, GK tilde. So, so this reputation you, you look at the reputation of this Lie algebra, and you want to ask on which this. Uh, Oh, oh, I think I forgot to say that uh, C, C, CK is, is supposed to be in the center. That, that, that is all that, that I forgot to say. When it defines Lie algebra, you have to also say how, how, what's the bracket with C, CK, and that is always zero. Uh, okay, so 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 you, you, this G, so in this category, you only consider GK, G modules of this algebra in which CI acts according to the by scalar minus P to the I minus H. Okay, then. Um, and then there's some induction, some, some inductions. If you have an object of uh, C prime K minus one, you can define uh, some objects of uh, some modules of a GK tilde called induced module as follows. <clears throat> you first regard M uh, as a, so uh, as a module over this Lie algebra. So you want in this Lie algebra, you view complex numbers as a quotient of this Lie algebra, and, and the, the kernel. So so everything give it epsilon k times anything should act as zero. So therefore, you 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 know how this GK minus one acts on M. And CI, uh, you also know that uh, well, you, at least for I up to K minus one, you know how it acts. But uh, but you 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 let CK also act by minus P to the K minus H. So 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 M can be viewed as a module over this 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 Lie algebra. Okay, now and then this you can this can be viewed as a module over universal universal unbroken algebra like this. And this you can induce to a larger universal unbroken algebra. So it, instead of this C of epsilon k, you now have epsilon k and epsilon k inverse. <clears throat> um, yes, and then uh, then, then you get, uh, then the, the, that's the definition of this induced uh, uh, module. And then it, it is, it, it is, if you start with something in C prime k minus one, this is also in C prime k, that's obvious. So it, it has this uh, CI acts, acts uh, as, as V1, each CI acts as, as V1. So now I want to define a, a sequence of objects. Uh, e zero lambda k, e one lambda k, e k lambda k in in this category C prime k. So if k equals zero, then this object 
so that is just the usual value module, the usual category of uh, representation of simply algebra. Uh, if k is at least one, uh, then there's uh, some problem with, with, with k prime equals k, but let first exclude that case, say k prime only from uh, Uh, I think I should also have uh, zero here. Maybe. <clears throat> so, so this piece object is just induced from the similar object from the previous category. Okay. Okay, so now, now what we, we so now in particular now is in particular easy lambda k that is defined, uh, and and then we expect that it has a unique simple quotient, and this is this is actually true for k equal one, and uh, yeah, but anyway, so I assume that this this is true, and then the not simple quotient by 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 a k lambda k. So now now this. Uh, e, 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 k prime, e, e k prime lambda k are defined for, for so, so now, now this, uh, so now this, this sequence is, is defined. So, so mo most of these terms are by induction and the, and then uh, the, the last term is, is a unique simple quotient of something that you already know. <clears throat> okay, so now we define uh, uh, new, some new, some, some, some abelian category, c k, which was is a sub sub is, is all object of C prime K, which so it should have finite length and have all composition factors uh, of the form that I, I uh, just well uh, involving this uh, the simple module that I mentioned. <clears throat> so then, uh, then the, the, the expectation is this, so yeah so the simple modules are that's obvious just as this. But we expect that all the all these other modules are, are the, in the same category. <clears throat> and for k equal one, this is true. Okay, so now 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 the main uh, expectation is that is that the matrix expressing e k prime lambda k in terms of the simple objects. In a rotten group of this category, the same as the metric expressing uh, these things in the in the in the first part of the talk. So 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 if this is true, th that means that this uh, uh, this this ek ek lambda have been interpreted in classic zero. So then. <coughs> okay. okay. So now. Uh, Okay, so now uh, I assume that this is true. I, I will make some, some more, more, even more uh, con conjectures. So, so first we, we expect that CK is a rigid braided monoidal category. And this, this was proved for K equal one in, in my paper with Cardan 1993. Uh, but I'm actually not, inter not interested in this mon monoidal structure, but only the fact that it has a duality, the rigid part, so it has a duality part. But, uh, but if, so assuming that that is true, then, then you can define the notion of tilting module, tilting object of this, of this uh, category, uh, because you have, you have valid objects, which are this E0 lambda K are, 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 should be regarded as valid objects, and then they have duals if, if, since the category has a duality. <clears throat> and then we, uh, so the notion of tilting model can be defined and then we expect that in the compass our tilting objects are uh, indexed by, by, the, by this uh, positive, by X plus also. And uh, 
Yeah, so this, uh, this, this should uh, explain this conjectural K generation of tilting modules, uh, uh, which, which was in, uh, predicted by my paper Williamson, so two papers Williamson. <clears throat> um, uh, uh, yeah, so, and, uh, uh, but, but uh, of course, it doesn't, it doesn't tell you what uh, the character is. Uh, but, um, <clears throat> but, but, uh, but what, what, uh, what, what, what seems, what seems likely to me Remember, is that's, that's, that's the last thing. Is that, uh, the, <clears throat> uh, so what, what, what I, I believe is that this uh, billiard patterns in, in my paper Williamson, SL3, are actually calculating some uh, KL polynomials uh, for a double affine credit algebra. Could you slide the paper up, please? Yes. So uh, as I said, these this, this polynomials are not not uh, not defined. Nobody has defined them. Uh, but uh, anyway, but but I think I think that this this uh, uh, so uh, so why is that natural? Because this uh, this 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 paper is concerned with second generation and a second in 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 in, in the in this uh, context, that in this uh, uh, speculation that I made, the second generation should be related to a dub double uh, loop algebra. And, and uh, in fact, it is known that if you take a double loop group, then the analog of the Hecke algebra of that is the, is the, uh, is the Cherednik double Hecke algebra. So, so, so it's not unreasonable that 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 that, that will appear, and and, uh, and the fact that 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 we, that we, we don't understand uh, this pattern, it, it could be. Really, I think it's similar to the fact that we don't understand this polynomial. But so, so, so these these are just some. But uh, it, it is quite possible that everything I said is is wrong. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, but I, I, I thought it's it's still uh, something like this much. I hope still it it, it could could be true. Some maybe some modification of this. <clears throat> okay, uh, maybe I, I will stop here. That's that's all. Uh, okay. Are there any questions? So just a small question about this slide. So. Um, at the uh, top of the page, you say that we expect that it is a rigid monoidal credit category, so that you can define tilting objects. But so no, to define tilting objects, you don't don't need the. No, no, I, I said no. I, I, like I said that I don't need the monoidal. Ah, okay. Only on the duality. Okay. But I said it's rigid monoidal, but but only the rigid. Only that I need the monoidal part. I don't need. Yes, but. Um, but this monoidal uh, category also uh, structure also uh, related to module has some interpretation in terms of modular no. representation theory. Oh, that's not clear. Like in your uh, paper with uh, Kashdan about relation of finely algebras to quantum groups, uh, it it was compatible with. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 I mean, that's how we prove the equivalence. Yeah. You, have, you have to, you have to construct the braided. But here, do you expect something like this also? I don't know. But here, I don't, I don't know what, what is the. No, no. So what, what this means is that there is uh, again something which you, some kind of generalization of a quantum group, but I don't know what it is. So did this, did it, so any monoidal category can be viewed as some, some quantum group. But I, no, this I don't know. Thanks. I have a related question about this uh, monoidal business. Uh, is it is it known, or does it follow from these uh, properties you you listed earlier that the like, you know, the the multiplicative 
structure constants for tensor product are, are positive in these EK lambda bases? Ah, yeah, but I think that's obvious. I think that, that is obvious because e, each EK lambda. Ah, uh, no, no, sorry, it's not it's not obvious. No, no, no. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But but it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But it should be part of this uh, uh, maybe this statement that that as uh, this simple objects. Uh, I, I think maybe maybe it is related to this monoidal something. Yes. Um, I, I have a question. If the, so in, in the case of the quantum group, you have the, the quantum Frobenius just once. Do you have in these categories sort of multiple, uh, like Frobenius that you can take to the power K or something like this? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah I, I think so. But so for example, for, uh, uh, yeah, if you look, well, so there's something, something like problem. So, so if you take this e e e e, e two uh, lambda, uh, there is, I think, in my paper, there is some some uh, something like a tensor product theorem. So for for e one lambda, this for quantum group, there's a tensor product theorem which involves quantum Frobenius map, which is in my my paper. But if you look, if you take e two lambda, it is also a tensor product of of uh, some. Some some lambda, some small lambda, and something which comes from a uh, Kazakh zero. That that is also in my paper. So so there is some something like uh, so so there is something similar to this thing like, like a quantum piece of unity. So. And and you expect that to categorify these uh, C case. Uh, yeah, it should be yes. Okay, thank you. Any any other questions? Uh, so, uh, John, you you mentioned that actually the uh, second generation uh, is probably related to, to the uh, double alpha and uh, related to, to the double alpha. Yes. I mean, how about the the, the higher the higher? Yeah. How about the third one? For uh, example, that, that's, that's just means that. The higher one will be totally hopeless. I think it will be, it will be extraordinarily complicated <laughs> because we don't even an even second one is so complicated. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I mean, whether or not, I mean, this can probably be seen as some part of some of the, uh, the doubles, which actually relate to some of the larger cuts Moody as some part of it. Is it possible? Um, what is related to what? I mean, we, we related to um, some, some kind of this, the double generalizations of the uh, hair catch, but related to some large cast Moody group. Yeah, no, I know. I, I, I don't know. I think that's, that's all. Yeah, I, I think this is all. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what that is. OK, OK, thank you. <clears throat> Can I ask another question about uh, this? So, um, well, when one build, uh, when you build this because linguistic theory, okay, there are some steps, but the initial step that's uh, not hard to, I mean, uh, explain if you uh, uh, know the statement, then that uh, the while group acts on the growth into group uh, of the category. And then a fine wild group in the modular case. Is this something? Can, can can you define the action of the double affine wild group on the second generation? No, <laughs> no. I haven't tried. No, no idea. Any other questions? I have a question. Uh, uh, in the case of the second generation, uh, do you is your category related to uh, uh, some of the uh, representations of toroidal uh, Lie algebras? Uh, 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know. No, no, I don't know. I, I, in fact, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know much about this story. Right now. So, so, I'm the wrong person to ask. That could be. Yeah. Okay. So, do they do, do they also have two parameters? I don't know. No, I don't. I don't know. <clears throat> Any other questions? Maybe, maybe last question. Uh, uh, so you didn't elaborate on the, um, uh, so the cache diagnostic polynomials, uh, you really expect uh, uh, polynomials in one variable. I mean, uh, you expect the same type of combinatorics. You don't expect, uh, uh, I mean, if you go to rational, to Chernik algebra, so you see combinatorics with two variable polynomials, but you don't see, you don't expect phenomena like that. Huh? Mm. No, but in this case, you only need one, one variable. This is uh, because you, you, you need some transition between two. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think that something depends on, on two dominant rates. So, so. No, I, th I think I don't see any two variable for them. Okay, thanks. Well, if there's no more questions, I mean, we can still ask after, but let's thank uh, George again for his great talk. <laughs>